Hey all, today we're going to talk more about parallel lines and transversals. And today we're going to show some ways to prove or confirm or show that lines are parallel. So here I have uh, line N and line M being intersected by transversal T. And I want to know uh, if this angle is 133 degrees and this angle is X, what value of X will make line N be parallel to line M. And I just threw in some notation here that uh, I can say line N parallel to line M just by writing this N with the parallel symbol M. So just a little reminder there. So X and 133, those are two corresponding angles. One's inside, one's outside, but they're both in the groups of four angles, they're both in the top left. So when two lines are parallel, corresponding angles are supposed to be congruent. So since they're corresponding, if the value of x was 133, then line n and m would end up being parallel. So they don't look parallel in this picture, but if we created x to be 133, so if we could shift line n and make x 133, then these two lines n and m would be parallel. Okay, same question, different kind of angle pair. This time I have two interior angles. They're between the two lines, N and M. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. So X and 87 are alternate interior angles. If N and M are going to be parallel, then those two alternate interior angles need to be congruent. So X would have to be 87 degrees. So same question, two different angles. I want you to pause here. I want you to try this one. Figure out what X is. So in order for these two to be parallel, I need to see what angle relationship I have. They're both interior. They're on the same side of the transversal. They're same side interior angles. So they need to be supplementary if line N and M will be parallel. So X needs to be 180 minus 94, so that, that other angle X needs to be 86 degrees in order for these two lines, N and M, to be parallel to each other. So it's very similar to the ones we've been doing. The question's just phrased in a different way. The last lesson I gave you two lines, and I told you they were parallel. Use the relationships to find some values. This time I'm asking you, what, the, what values would you need to make the lines parallel. So we're showing that in this case this angle needs to be 86 degrees in order for these two lines to be parallel to each other. So just want to take a minute to introduce a new idea. Uh, we're going to work on this idea throughout the year. It's uh, what we call proof. So I have set up here a two column proof. There's two columns. There's one column uh, where we will make some statements and the, there's another column where we'll justify those statements, and uh, we call that reasons. So here I have two parallel lines and a transversal. I'm given some information. This given information is something I'm told to be true. So angle uh, line J is parallel to line K. And I want to show, using uh, my geometry knowledge, I want to prove that angle 2 and angle 7 are congruent. Okay, so we know that those are alternate exterior angles, but without that knowledge, we, we can still show that they're congruent to each other. So when we start this two-column proof, my first statement I make is just the information that I'm given, and I can justify it's true by saying it's given. And then this next statement says angle 2 and angle 4 are congruent. So let's look at those, 2 and 4. Those are corresponding angles, so my reason I can say that is that those angles correspond. And then we say that angle 4 and angle 7 are congruent. Well, those two angles are vertical angles, and we know that vertical angles are congruent, so that's our justification there. And so we have something that actually kind of looks like the law of syllogism, where 
end of that congruent statement is the same as the beginning of that congruent statement. So I can sort of cancel those out and write that angle 2 then must be congruent to angle 7, which is what we're trying to prove. And we call that the transitive property. So we've shown what we wanted to prove, and we can be done. So I'm going to show you another one. Again, I start out with these two lines. Uh, I'm told they're parallel, so that's my first statement. I'm given that information so I can justify saying that because it was given. Then I say that angle 1 and angle 4 are supplementary. Well, those are same side interior angles. And we know that they're supplementary, so our justification is they're same side interior. We say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4 is 180. Well, two supplementary angles add up to 180. That's just the definition of being supplementary. Just like in the last one, we're going to say here that angle 4 and angle 7 are congruent because they're vertical angles. So again, we have this situation where uh, 1 and 4 add to 180, 4 and 7 are the same, so let's ditch angle 4 and let's replace it with 7 and say that angle 1 and angle 7 must also add to 180. We're going to call that substitution because we're plugging angle 7 in where angle 4 used to be. And we wanted to be able to show that angle 1 and angle 7 are supplementary. Well, we just said that they add to 180. So by definition, that makes them supplementary angles. And we've made our proof. So again, this is sort of just an introduction to what proofs look like. Uh, we're going to be asked to do some fill-in-the-blank blank proofs like this. In the future, uh, some of the statements over here I'm going to ask you to fill in. Um, not ready yet to put these on a test, but we're going to start building towards this idea of writing proofs. So no form today. Just show me your notes and grab a practice.